All right, folks, so we're going to wrap up the rest of chapter 18, uh, which will conclude our reading and everything, too. Um, so last couple pieces of land resources, two kind of major land resources that we need to cover are agricultural land and then uh, wetlands and coastal wetlands and estuaries, etc. cetera. Uh, so agricultural land, um, in the U.S., we have 300 million acres of what we call prime farmland. So this is farmland or land uh, that is has really high quality soil that's not likely to be eroded uh, you know in terms of topography and so on as long as we're managing the soil properly like we learned back in chapter 15 um, so that's about one acre per uh, US citizen right of prime farmland and that's not counting the marginal lands okay um, some of the dangers though you know th this is really really important land to us this is our ability to grow food to feed our people right um some of the danger is there is pressure for those landowners to uh there's economic incentive i should say not really pressure there's incentive for these landowners to sell uh particularly to to help com uh deal with uh these sprawling cities what they call suburban sprawl and you know, remember we talked about that back in our urbanization chapter Okay, so parking lots, housing developments, strip malls, all this stuff. Uh, they're actually building these on our prime agricultural land, which is the same. Um, so anyways, that, it's, a, it's a little snippet from the chapter, but it's worth understanding that our prime farmland is a land resource, really important one for food. And the major uh, danger to our prime farmland is suburban sprawl. Okay, uh, let's move on though to wetlands. Now, if, if I was to like picture myself as an environmental science teacher back when I was in college or even high school, uh, not that I pictured myself doing this that much back then, but if I were, you know, I'd picture myself with my students out in a wetland taking water samples and doing biodiversity studies and stuff like that. This is, uh, and part of the reason for that is, uh, it, it's not necessarily common knowledge, but what are our wetlands are, uh, one of our more important important ecosystems, right? So when we say a wetland, we're talking about water that stands or flows gently through low areas for at least part of the year. I think the minimum qualification is there has to be standing water uh, for at least one month of the year to be called a wetland, okay? Um, now, we have very specific plants that have adapted to life in the wet environments and soils that develop in oxygen poor conditions, um, and they're saturated with water. So we have a specific set of plants and other organisms that are specifically adapted to these wetland ecosystems. Okay, um, and so these particular ecosystems, uh, when it comes to ecosystem services, uh, play not just a, a big role, uh, it's a vital and ultra important role in helping uh, maintain a balance, not just in within their own ecosystem, but for people and for other ecosystems as well. Okay, um, they provide flood protection. They improve water quality. They provide millions of dollars in economic benefits every year. Um, yet, they are one of the fastest disappearing types of landforms on the planet. And part of the reason for that is. Uh, it's not directly evident to most people just how important these land resources are that we get from our wetlands. Uh, they're drained, okay, to build Walmart or something like that, okay? But uh, I need to impress upon just how important these ecosystems are. Um, and so let, let's talk a little bit about kind of why they are so important. Let, let, let's begin there. Uh, so we have our freshwater wetlands, which include marshes, bogs, muddy swamps, and stream banks. Uh, surface runoff, underground springs, flooding rivers, etc. Uh, I think the closest place, uh, so if you guys are driving to Tri-Cities, for example, right? Uh, uh, you get past the, uh, the paper mill before you get to Pasco, if you look off to the, both the left and the right. That highway, Highway uh, 12, I guess it is, drives right through a wetland, okay? Um, so and that would be a freshwater wetland, okay? Uh, we also have coastal wetlands, which include salt marshes, mangrove islands, coastal shorelines, shallow bays, inlets, swamps, mudflats, deltas, estuaries. We got all kinds of these things, okay? Uh, 
What's interesting about the coastal wetlands is that's where uh, fresh water meets uh, salt water. And so, again, I, I talked about the specialty, specialty organisms that live in wetlands. The ones that live in our estuaries or our coastal wetlands are even more interesting because they're adapted to both fresh and salt water. Uh, now, typically, organisms are adapted to salt water or they're adapted to fresh water. It's not too many organisms that span both conditions. Okay. Um, so what we need to understand, uh, you know, we've got these danger to our wetlands. Okay. We will talk about all these specific things in just a little bit, but, um, you know, we spent a lot of chapter 14 talking about floods. Uh, we'll spend a lot of chapter 22 talking about water pollution. Uh, and we did address wetlands a little bit back in chapter, uh, uh, 16, when we're talking about mining and how we can use constructed wetlands to help build the water, right? Uh, and, and it just wasn't understood that, uh, when there's a, a, a floodplain, right? Wetlands are a part of our floodplain, uh, topography. All right. And these wetlands, interestingly, they act like gigantic sponges, right? So if we're, we're in a floodplain, uh, much of the water gets slowed down or absorbed in these wetlands, right? So, uh, it's like a gigantic sponge. So you got a water spilling on a table and you put a sponge there. It soaks up a lot of that water. That's what our wetlands do, right? So they mitigate floods because they're able to absorb not just the water, but also slow it down. Okay. Now, sometimes our water that is flooding, uh, picks up sediments. It picks up. Well, in, in urban areas, it picks up all kinds of nasty toxins. These wetlands, because they slow that water down and absorb it, they also have microorganisms that are there and they, they filter that water out. Okay. So in terms of, uh, mitigating floods and maintaining water quality, and, uh, you know, we're lucky to live where water quality is pretty darn high. Um, but in terms of livelihood and the health of not just people, but the ecosystem, having clean water is paramount, uh, just as important as clean air, if not more so. Okay. And so the huge and important role the wetlands play in keeping our water healthy and mitigating floods, uh, it, 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 it's irreplaceable. We, we essentially, if we were to get rid of all of our wetlands, we would have a, a massive decline in water quality, likely see diseases on the rise. Uh, they, they just play such a, a, a big part in all that. Okay. Um, and, and, and in human defense, it just wasn't really understood for a long time. And so we had this massive decline in our wetland areas because they were kind of just pictured as wastelands. Like, oh, this area is just covered in waste. We don't get much out of them, right? So we drain them, we cover them up with concrete, put a, put a Walmart in and so on. And, uh, what we learned, uh, as a result is, wow. Floods are way worse than they used to be. Wow, water quality has gone way down despite our best efforts to keep things clean. Why is that? Well, it's because we, we didn't understand that these natural systems were helping to maintain those things for us. All right. Uh, so we drain them for agriculture and mosquito control. We dredge them for nav navigation. Uh, we construct dams, dikes, and seawalls. We fill in for solid waste disposal. We build roads. Uh, we use them for mining for gravel and fossil fuels, etc. All right. And uh, as a result, they're shrinking by about 58,500 acres per year. All right. Uh, well, you know, nice thing about being an industrialized country and a country that does love its natural beauty uh, and clean water and clean air is important to us. We learned that all these things the wetlands do for us. Uh oh better hurry. Uh, and so we've put in place some legislation that says we're no longer allowed to have a net loss of wetlands. Now, it's not to say that you can't develop on a wetland, but if you do develop on a wetland, you need to uh, restore an equal sized wetland somewhere else. Okay. Uh, so that's that no net loss philosophy. Okay. Uh, the only downside of that is not all wetland restorations are successful. Again, we can't just take, wipe out an ecosystem and expect to be able to replace it, right? Goes back to that whole biosphere fiasco we talked about earlier. Okay. Uh, coastal wetlands provide food and habitat for many aquatic animals. They're historically regarded as wasteland, much like other uh, wetlands. Uh, but one of the things that would, so Hurricane Katrina, lots of you guys were pretty young 
when Hurricane Katrina occurred, but that was massive catastrophe. Well, hurricanes hit the Louisiana coast uh, fairly regularly, right? Uh, and so it stands to reason that we had ecosystems in place that could tolerate the occasional hurricane. Um, and part of the reason, uh, part of the reason, there's other reasons involved that Hurricane Katrina was just so darn nasty, aside from it being a perfectly timed storm with storm surge, uh, was we removed these mangrove swamps. Mangrove swamps are a coastal wetland. Mangrove swamps can absorb, slow down, and moderate storm surge from even something as gigantic as hurricanes. And because we removed those, because we kind of just saw them as a wasteland, tried to build a seawall instead, uh, we felt the full impact of Hurricane Katrina instead of a moderated impact that we would get had the mangrove swamps been left where they were. All right. Um, so we're starting to see the importance of these things. And as a result, we're trying to uh, restore these ecosystems when possible and even trying to get them to grow and replenish themselves. All right. Uh, so uh, understanding the importance of coastal ecosystems, uh, we have to look at where the people live, right? 3.8 billion people live within 150 kilometers of a coastline. 19 of the 20 most densely populated countries live along the coast. In the U.S., 14 of our 20 largest cities are along the coast. Right. Uh, as sea levels rise, which they're going to, hopefully not as much as they could, but they are going to. Uh, how are we going to help mitigate the, the increased damage from floods? Well, coastal wetlands, estuaries can be part of that solution. OK, uh, so in, in uh, closure to this unit or this chapter, uh, understanding the importance of our land resources, all the ecosystem services provided by them. Uh, we have four criteria of importance for conservation of land resources, right? So first of all, we want all types of land uh, having some sort of conservation area. So we want to represent every kind of major ecosystem that we have, right? And, and so we kind of prioritize based on uh, how much is lost or degraded since colonization. Uh, the number of present examples of particular ecosystems. So if we have like a very, very small ecosystem and it's localized and only found in one area, it's going to be given a higher priority than, let's say, uh, uh, coniferous forest, which we have in lots of places. All right. Um, the estimated likelihood that that given ecosystem will lose area in the next 10 years is an important thing. And then also looking at the species that reside in the area. So going back to that spotted owl issue I talked about uh out on the Olympic Peninsula, which helped save the forest. It was a spotted owl that led to the uh, conservation of that habitat, not the habitat itself. All right. Uh, so the book has a uh, list of the top 10 most endangered ecosystems in the United States. And these are all kind of specialized ecosystems that don't expand a large area. Uh, you could take a look at that list if you want to. Uh, lots of them are on the East Coast, where we've got lots and lots of people, much more densely populated on the East Coast. Uh, the West has many fewer uh, endangered ecosystems, and also Hawaii. Uh, we'll talk about Hawaii in the next chapter, and why it's such a biodiversity hotspot. All right, uh, that wraps it up. I'm going to get this thing uploaded, and I will see you guys manana.